Well, for the sake of time, I'm going to get started and we will have this uh, recording um, recorded, uh, webinar recorded, so those team members um, who cannot join can always watch the recording. Um, thank you so much for joining us at an evening time uh, on a snowy Wednesday here, or Thursday. See, I lost my <laughs> dates. Um, my name is Punar Karajamadech. I'm a professor in the finance department at the Crossland School of Management, and I'm the founding director of our business advancement center for health, uh, one of the hosts of this um, uh, competition. And we are so excited to kick off with all of you the fourth annual interdisciplinary health data competition. And I'm joined here in the presentations by Julie Sonier, who is the president and CEO of the Minnesota Community Measurement. As you've seen in some of the, the communications we've sent out so far, we have a really cool partnership with Minnesota Community Measurement for this uh, particular event. And, and you'll find out how and why in a little bit. So to just start with a quick overview, the data competition began in 2020, and our goal with the competition was to promote interdisciplinary dialogue on data, health data, and, and, and to use the data in a way that we can address some of the challenges in healthcare. As you are all from different schools that you can see in this slide, um, this takes a major collaboration across different institutes and different uh, colleges at the, across the university, such as healthcare is a very challenging area that not one single discipline that you see here can solve on its own. So um, first, and foremost, uh, our acknowledgement and, and gratitude goes to all the colleges that you see here, College of Pharmacy, Carlson School of Management, Institute for Health Informatics, which is part of the Office of Academic Clinical Affairs, School of Public Health, School of Nursing, School of Dentistry, as well as the medical school in, in making this competition possible. Faculty and staff from all of these colleges have collaborated together to put this event. So what we do in this competition is that the students, you, uh, will be completing an exploratory analysis of a particular database that we choose. Every year we choose a different data set. And, and, and this year we have a specific data set as well. And we will ask you to provide some innovative solutions and insights using some data science tools, analytics. And sometimes if what is appropriate is a basic t-test and a descriptive analysis, it is what you will be using. And again, uh, lots of thanks to all the collaborators and, the, the, and everyone who is part of this competition. Um, just a little bit of stats about this particular year's competition. We are so excited that 74 graduate students uh, are participating this year, representing 21 teams and 14, yes, 14 University of Minnesota colleges and schools. You have Carlson Schools, School of Public Health, CBS, CFAN, CLA, CSC, the Humphrey School, Health Institute for Health Informatics, Medical School, School of Nursing, Co College of Pharmacy, and School of Dentistry, and School of Statistics. And similarly, as we have our representation across the University of Minnesota, we have lots of different judges, as well as faculty from all of these colleges. We also have judges uh, from the industry, um, Bind Benefits, our medical school, Healthcare Coast Institute, Isil Healthcare, Mayo Clinic, Optum and Optum Labs, RTI International, United Health Group, Unite Us, Komodo Health, and M Health Fairview to judge first and second round of the competition. So again, our um, goal is for uh, students to uh, to embrace interdisciplinary dialogue and how to use data to address current healthcare challenges, um, and showcase their work and understanding in a real and of the real world challenges in healthcare, and of course also to just like practice and enhance your analytic skills for innovative solutions, um, methodologies, and and just have fun. Um, all right, so. Before I go into all the requirements and everything, I do want to announce that if you have questions, please write them in the Q&A or the chat, and we will monitor and, and get to those as much as we can uh, throughout this webinar. Now, some of the requirements, uh, some of this information is already kind of uh, communicated with you. The competition really has two rounds. So uh, what you 
we'll be doing is we will announce the data set now and you will have access to the data set. And then your project submissions are going to be due Sunday, March 26th uh, by almost midnight, 11.59 p.m. We go with the canvas. 11.59 settings. Um, what you will be uploading into your Google Drive is a one-page executive summary, uh, maximum of 500 words, not including references, and a slide deck outlining uh, your team's question, you know, significance of that question, the methodology you use, and your findings, uh, your project. Uh, again, maximum of 20 slides. And then we also ask you to do a voiceover recording of your presentation. Uh, you know, with your analysis and insights and innovations. And again, maximum of 20 minutes, 20 slides, 20 minutes. Um, and what we do on our end is then we share this executive summary, summary slide deck and voiceover recording uh, with our first round judges. Um, each judge, uh, uh, each team gets evaluated by uh, three judges at least. And then based on the judging uh, scores um, and the rubric that we share in your Google folders, Google Drive folders, uh, we will select top four finalists to advance to the final uh, final stage, which will happen in person, but broadcasted virtually on April 5th at 4 p.m. Again, we want the presenters to be in person. So all of you participating in the, the data competition, please mark your calendars for April 5 at 4 p.m. Uh, we will get together as, as, as the competition group and, and celebrate the finalist teams and celebrate all of you. Um, and again, uh, please try to make that in person. Uh, even if your team is not one of the top four, it's so much fun to get together and meet, as I mentioned, 74 students and 14 colleges. And we don't really have that all the time in an, any of our regular classroom kind of settings. Um, again, the, the four teams will present uh, for 20 minutes uh, with five minutes to judge for the Q&A. Um, big rule, only public data, available data is allowed in this competition other than the data set that we are sharing with you uh, that we're going to announce next. Um, you are allowed to use any other public use the publicly available data sets. Um, but again, your primary focus should be the data set given prim primarily selected for this particular competition. Um, private data sources, proprietary data sources, data sources where um, students need to get restricted access and things like that are prohibited as uh, to be used. Uh, you as a team, can even advise your mentor and by all means reach out to any on any one of us and and the competition website also lists the steering committee the faculty steering committee reach out to any of the faculty there as well um or select your own advisor or mentor or you don't have to need have an advisor or mentor but the key thing is all the work must be original and they must be completed only by the registered team members all right now the required data set if everyone is ready we are so 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 excited to be partnering with the minnesota community measurement uh, for uh, this competition and and we want you to specifically look at aspects of healthcare quality value and disparities in care and quality and um, to do that minnesota community measurement has prepared a custom data set for our competition that we are sharing with you you. And again, a lot of these components are available in public domain, but this custom data set is curated and put together only for our competition. So we are so thankful to Minnesota Community Measurement. And um, to, to enable that, um, we would like you to um, sign a, a consent, acknowledgement and consent that you've reviewed the DUA uh, that is required. And then once you upload your signed form uh, to your Google folder, you will be able to download the data set uh, and use the full data set. Um, to, to prepare for your project. Um, now, it's my great, great pl pleasure to introduce you, uh, Julie Soni Sonier, who is the CEO and President of the Minnesota Community Measurement. She will tell us all about Minnesota Community Measurement, uh, which is a multi-stakeholder nonprofit that empowers healthcare decision makers with data to improve healthcare quality, affordability, and equity. 
Julie has 25 years of experience in healthcare policy and reforms to improve healthcare costs and quality and access. And she joined uh, Minnesota Community Measurement as its president and CEO in 2017. Um, at Minnesota Community Measurement, she has led strategic focus on leveraging uh, the organization's strength as a convener and a trusted source of data, which is super critical to make measurement more meaningful, timely, and actionable in such ways to support better health health care quality, affordability, and health equity. Um, prior to joining Minnesota Community Measurement, Julie served as the director of Minnesota State Employee Group Insurance Program, as deputy director of the State Health Access Data Center, SHADAC, which is at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, and as director of the Health Economics Program at the Minnesota Department of Health. Uh, we also have from Julie's team, Mahjong, who's the director of data strategy and analytics, who can help us with any questions questions you may have uh, during the, the webinar. And with that, uh, Julie, I invite you to tell us more about Minnesota Community Measurement and the, 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 the cool data that you guys have. Thank you, Pinar. And we are really thrilled to be partnering with you as well on the data competition. And we really just can't wait to see um, what the teams come up with. So very, very quick overview of the data set. Um, it includes quality, cost, and utilization metrics. So there are 31 quality measures in the data set, three cost measures. So those are for total cost of care, for resource use and a price index. So just kind of think about it as like cost is kind of like resources or quantity of services times price. Um, there are 10 utilization measures, um, which are part of the work that we do in analyzing cost. And depending on the measure, um, the data set includes um, both medical group and clinic level location. I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Um, and the data set includes two years of data. So we included data for 2018 and for 2021 in the data set. So on the next slide, um, I'm gonna start by giving you a little bit more background on Minnesota Community Measurement as an organization, what makes our data unique, and some more details and pointers about the data set that we have made available for the competition. As Pinar mentioned, uh, we are an independent nonprofit uh, that uses data to advance healthcare quality, affordability, and equity throughout Minnesota. And our mission is to empower healthcare decision makers of all types with meaningful data to drive improvement. So Minnesota Community Measurement was founded in two, 2005, uh, and it was really on the idea that we could drive improvement in healthcare farther and faster if we collaborate to do three things. So the first one is bringing people together to agree on common priorities for measurement. Second, combining data across payers and providers to get results that are more meaningful and reliable from a single trusted source. And then finally, making data about healthcare quality, cost and equity transparent to empower the decision makers. So we actually wear many different hats as it relates to healthcare measurement and data. So we're a convener, we're a measure developer, we're a data aggregator, and we're a publisher. Um, as, and we know that the data are very powerful and they motivate change, and they're used in a lot of different ways. So one example is that healthcare providers use the data to compare themselves to others and to statewide averages, and then they also use it to drive their quality improvement strategies. Uh, we know that private payers and Medicaid use the data in value-based contracting initiatives. Um, they're used to understand and make progress on reducing health disparities. And then they're also an incredibly rich and detailed source of information that researchers use to understand what works to improve healthcare quality and affordability. Uh, on the next slide, <clears throat> I wanna tell you a little bit about what's exciting and unique about the data. Uh, there's a few things that I would highlight here um, compared to other sources of information on healthcare cost and quality. So especially compared to organizations that are um, that we consider uh, sort of our peers in other parts of the country. So the first thing to highlight is really the breadth and the depth of the measurement and public reporting that we do. So our work covers the full landscape of healthcare quality and cost and equity. And we use claims data and clinical data for measurement and reporting. And we really are not aware of any other organization in the country that has as broad a scope of what we cover or goes as deep. So 
uh, for example, um, reporting on health disparities by race and ethnicity. The second thing that I would highlight is the comprehensiveness and the completeness of the data that we do have. So sometimes organizations um, are reporting on quality for maybe a subset of providers in their state that happen to participate in their initiatives or sometimes a subset of patients. Um, and in our data, we have a nearly universal participation of healthcare providers in submitting clinical data for quality measures. And the data includes all patients and all payers. So there's also a lot of time that's been invested over many years in getting reliable and complete data by race, ethnicity, language, and country of origin. So we have some of the best data in the country to help understand disparities along those dimensions. Um, and then that brings me to the last point on this slide, which is that how these data are collected for patients is just as important as what is collected. So this is much more complicated than just creating a field in the database and checking to see if it's populated. So huge amounts of work across the state have gone into defining and implementing best practices for patient self-reporting of race, ethnicity, language, and country of origin in our work in this area is nationally recognized. So I wanna to switch to kind of giving you a quick overview of the data set that um, is being used for the competition. So one thing that's helpful to know um, is that there are three types of measures in the data set and they what the source of data for each of them is. So the first type of measure is quality measures that are calculated from patient level clinical data that is submitted to MNCM from medical groups. So this is the all patient, all payer data that I just referred to. And with these, with these data, we're able to distinguish patients by the clinic location where they were treated and so we publish quality measure results at both the medical group and the clinic location level. So just for clarity, you know, the way that we use the term, a medical group can include multiple clinic locations. Uh, in the data set for the competition, wherever clinic level data is included, we also include the clinic city and the zip code to make it easier for you to merge in other data that could be specific to a geographic location. Um, the second type of measure in the data set is quality measures that are reported to us by health plans. And then because of the way that care gets billed, um, and because a lot of these are claims-based, we actually aren't able to identify the specific clinic locations in those measures. And so these get publicly reported at the medical group level. And then finally, the cost and utilization measures also come from health plans, and they have those same limitations with regard to identifying the individual clinic location. So those are medical group level data as well. Um, there are details on how each of the measures is defined in the data dictionary that's provided with the data files for the competition. Um, and you could also consult MNCM published reports for additional context. So on the next slide, um, another thing that is important to be aware of about the competition data set is whether and how specific measures are risk adjusted. Um, and the purpose of risk adjustment is to enable fair comparisons across providers by adjusting for variation in the characteristics of their patient populations that are outside of providers' control. So things like the age distribution of their uh, patients, socioeconomic status, illness severity. Um, and this slide indicates which of the three types of measures that I just described are risk adjusted. And uh, for more details on the risk adjustment measure methodology, um, I would refer you to um, MNCM's published reports on each of these types of measures. Um, and then finally, um, just a couple of additional points that we thought would be helpful as you get started. Uh, so one of them, and this is on the next slide, um, one of them is that there are a couple of measures in the data set where we've only included one year of data instead of two. Uh, and that's because sometimes measure definitions change over time in ways that disrupt the ability to make apples to apples comparisons over time. So we didn't give you the 2018 data for those two measures because it's not appropriate to compare to the 2021 um, data. But we did wanna make the measures available um, because you might want to use them in some other way than comparing across years. Um, it's also important to be aware that there's some, some variation in the time period that a measure might be applicable to. So most commonly, the time period of measurement is a full calendar year, uh, but there are some important exceptions. 
Um, so I would recommend that you take a careful look at that in the data dictionary. Um, and then there's also a link on this slide to where you can find our public reports on cost and quality, which might be a useful resource to you as you get started. Um, the last thing that I want to note is that um, I did I talked a lot about um, sort of what's exciting about our data and the and the ability that we have um, to do analysis by race ethnicity. Um, but actually, the data set for the competition doesn't have the detailed demographic breakdowns of patient population within cl clinics or medical groups. So just wanted to be um, really clear about that. Um, and with that, um, let me turn things back over to Anar. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Julie. And thanks so much for that. I, I would like to use this data set, but I, maybe I'll carve a little bit of time and um, maybe with the faculty steering committee, we'll do a project too. Um, thanks so much. So um, basically with uh, what Julie described, your challenge as the computing students is to complete an exploratory analysis of the custom use data set that we're providing for you. Um, to um to basically research and address aspects of healthcare quality value and dispar disparity so the questions are all yours and and we look forward to all sorts of different interesting ideas uh, you will bring uh, to share with us some example topics these are only and only examples and again you will you're free to use the topic of your choice just sort of like what we heard from Julie and her team and and what the data set uh, does include, you know, you could think of predictive models of healthcare quality and area characteristics. Um, you could look at the evaluation of the link between the competition between providers, provider density and quality and value of healthcare received. You could look at the evaluation of um, the impact of changing economic conditions on healthcare quality and value, um, exploration of subject of patient experience and how it relates to measured quality, um, identification of any other connection between size of health system and the quality of healthcare received, controlling for various other factors. As you can see, I didn't use the word COVID there. We're all so excited that COVID is finally going away. But again, uh, this is data from 2018 and 2021. So you actually can think of COVID in the mix of your questions as well. So some other data sources oops, um, that, um, that we kind of just identified, but again, like you can look at any other publicly available data set is, you know, CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS. They have a wealth of other data sets that may be available that are available on their websites that are public use files, easy to download. There are examples, some I want to mention are provider data catalogs hospital information and data sets, Medicare spending, etc. Um, also other data sets that maybe you may find interesting are the HCAPS site of provider surveys, American Community Survey data, which has a wealth of demographic information, Dartmouth Atlas of Healthcare that has a lot of the maps on how uh, costs and quality and care, as well as, you know, cross crosswalks between different definition or geographic markets in healthcare. Um, HRSA has a bunch of different uh, data sets like the area resource file. That is, again, a lot of healthcare resource um, data and demographics data for different uh, geographic areas down to county level. And one thing we didn't link here, like county health rankings. So there are a lot of different data sets you can actually think about uh, utilizing um, as part of the uh, the linking with the data that we're we're giving you. Again, this is in the helpful sources document in your shared uh, Google Drive folder. Um, how will evaluation work? So we have a well-developed well -developed rubric um, and that can again be found in your uh, shared competition resources folder. Uh, we look at relevance. Um, so um, are, is, is your project clearly stating the problem you're solving? And can you define that problem, you know, in, in concise ways? And, and why is that problem important? Why the significance of the problem? And, and with the problem, 
putting it into context is really important as to um, understanding the situation where that problem lives, issues and challenges and opportunities. And, and really we, as because this is especially an interdisciplinary data competition, we want you to think of it from this relevancy to different stakeholders across multiple disciplines and multiple perspectives. Um, the second one is presentation. Um, again, uh, you're given the way you compete is your executive summary or slide deck and your voiceover on your slide deck. Um, we want to make sure you your message is very clear and concise and that you show a, a strong connection to the problem that you're highlighting. Um, communication skills are important. I encourage all of you to to, you know, when you're preparing your presentation, practice, practice, practice makes it perfect. Um, so um, just make sure that that presentation is of high quality, has uh, good established uh, uh, communication skills. Um, it shows that your comprehensive understanding of the subject matter and the solutions, and that professionalism is very important, and that all competition rules need to be followed. Um, the third aspect we look at is the analysis. Um, did you use the data effectively to support project findings? Sometimes we want to, we, uh, we have a lot of questions, uh, um, but we can't always answer it with the data that we have available. So in those kinds of things, situations, it's best to leave those kinds of questions to other data sets and, and thinking about how we can best answer those questions. So make sure the questions you're answering are um, effectively answerable with the data sets uh, that you're using. And, and also looking at your findings, insights, um, that they are conceptually sound, unique, and supported by your analyses. And again, uh, showing your results, part of communication, but also part of analysis is very important to use different data visualization to essentially show um, effective, clear uh, analysis that contributes to your project. Um, the final category is um, innovation. Um, innovation uh, basically uh, shows that you have a clear and thorough rationale uh, for your proposal, for your uh, proposed uh, problem, and as well as the solution, and that the solution and the action plans are feasible, innovative, and pragmatic. Again, uh, we may ask a very important question, and, and we may have some findings about it, but then if those findings don't have any way to translate into action, practice, policy action, for example, um, and if they're not sort, sort of create, coming at it for, with an innovative aspect, they may not be as interesting. Um, you need to include a high level implementation and action plan. Again, we're not asking you to implement everything or be very specific about this is the way to implement, but, but so tell us a little bit about, you know, what did we learn from your findings and what, how can we use that data and insights that you're bringing in an actionable way um, and a strategy to evaluate the value and the impact of that action. Um, and again, uh, proposed solutions and outcomes should be interdisciplinary in nature uh, with impact on diverse stakeholders. And uh, we want you to acknowledge or, or highlight where that is the case. Um, I think that, oh, and here is, I think, one of my most final slides. Um, your shared tools are all in your Google Drive folders. Each team will have their own Google folder, uh, Google Drive assigned. Um, please can contact Kim Choi or someone in our team uh, if you have any access issues. Uh, again, three uh, project materials you need to Upload by March 26, 11.59 p.m. is your executive summary slide deck and your, and your voiceover recording. Um, we have a shared competition uh, resource folder where you, know, you can uh, look through the rubrics and the rules and requirements um, and the data set is there, the important dates, and also like how to do voice thread uh, tutorials, etc. But again, by all means, just uh, reach out to us. Um, we will keep a frequently asked questions FAQ section on the competition website. So if you have any questions that are about the data as well, reach out to us and we will share these questions as needed with uh, Julie's team at Minnesota Community Measurement. And Keep in mind that any question asked to our team and any answer that we get for that question will be posted 
on our competition website. So all teams have access to those questions and answers. Um, important dates. Today, uh, we kicked off our competition. March 26th is your important day for submit, submitting your project. Um, we will have the judges, the first round judges, uh, look at your projects between March 27 and 29. We will announce the top four scoring teams on March 30th. And we will expect the finalist presentations, the top four teams, to present in person and accompanied with an awards ceremony on April 5th, 4 to 7 p.m. Again, we want, to, we want all of you to be there and join us in person if you can. Uh, if, if not, then join us virtually. Uh, but presenters will attend um, in person at the Carlson School. And we have a registration link here to attend the final presentations. And uh, we have really nice awards, uh, $4,000 to the first place team sponsored by United Health Foundation. Second place team will get $2,000 sponsored by the Office of Academic Clinical Affairs. And a third place team will get $1,000. And we will also have an honorable mention of $50 gift card per team member um, for the fourth place team. Uh, with that, uh, this is our steering committee. We are so thankful to Steve Johnson from Institute for Health Informatics, Helen Parsons from School of Public Health, Ray Zhang from the Medical School, Da Lu from Carlson School, Julian Wilson from Biostats in School of Public Health, Caitlin Carroll from Health Policy Management in School of Public Health, uh, Joel Farley in College of Pharmacy, Robin Austin in School of Nursing, Russ Fung from the Carlson School, Karen Quick from from the School of Dentistry, Kim Choi, who is in Bach team, and Edward, Ed Walczak, who is uh, the Carlson School's Bach Interim Program Manager. And, and of course, we are so thankful to our um, sponsors, presenting sponsor United Health Foundation, gold sponsor of o Office of Academic Clinical Affairs, and our community sponsor, Com Minnesota Council of Health Plans. And, um, None of this would be possible without our partnership with the Minnesota Community Measurement. So very much, many, many thanks. And, and here I will uh, pause to maybe end the presentation, uh, stop sharing my screen so we can answer any um, questions that you may have. So I see one question in the Q&A. Um, Let's see if it shows up on Google, we're good, but that about you subscriptions to a bunch of stuff like Frost Sullivan data set, those are not good. Okay, so this is an interesting question. Anything you can access through University of Minnesota libraries uh, should be okay. I mean, if uh, University of Minnesota library says, well, you can only access it if, they're in, if you're in this particular school or if you're in this particular program, no, please don't use those resources. But anything that you can access directly for free, public, publicly in the sense that through University of Minnesota libraries, you should be able to use. Are there other questions for... When will you have access to the data set? I am going to defer to Kim Choi on that one. Great question. So for those teams who have every team member has submitted the signed um, student DUA acknowledgement and consent form um, during the webinar, you should have received an email granting you access to the data set. If, if you have submitted your form, but you have team members who have not, um, nobody on the team will get access until every single member has uploaded their signed form. Um, so you can go into your the shared folder, um, see who has signed, who has not, and maybe help encourage those other people to get their signed forms in. Um, but if you if you're everybody on your team has gotten uploaded their signed DUAs, then you during the webinar, you should now have access to the data sets. Thank you, Kim. Uh, let's see. Are there other questions? Uh, we understand that the question we answer can be a broad in general, but how do you plan to use the suggestions that would give us an idea about the priorities of questions? Honestly, 
we as a team, uh, as the organizing committee, we don't have any stand on uh, the priority of the questions. Um, it's really the, up to the teams to say, this is the question we're answering and this is why it's important to answer. So again, you are free to choose any question you want. Uh, what happens if two different teams without knowing show similar results? That's perfectly fine. Um, teams are independent. They're free to choose the, the questions they want. They're free to choose the analysis that they're doing. Um, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine from our sense. And then um, the, the way to explain a little bit, like the way the judging works is, you know, we have a group of over 20 first round judges and each judge will get to um, uh, judge about three or four teams. That way we are, we are ensuring that each team will get judged by three or four judges. So different for all that matters regarding to this question, uh, different teams, asking the exact same question, maybe judged by extremely different groups of judges as well. Um, let's see, would we have access to the slides or recording uh, for your teammates? Absolutely, we are making the slides and the recording available on uh, the competition website. Can we add files in the shared drive? And this is a question to Kim as she's setting the uh, settings for the Google Drive. Absolutely, that's the beauty of the shared drive. So yes, we encourage, um, it's a great way to collaborate. Um, there should be uh, folders in each of the your team folders for like your sign, final submission. So what's, you know, the the requirements that the judges will be evaluating, which is that executive summary, the um, PowerPoint slides, and then your your voiceover recording, those are the only items that judges will be evaluating. So anything else that goes in the folder is great for your team to work on, use it as you see fit. Any other questions? Well, those were very good questions. Thank you. Um, and again, we are here to answer any other questions that uh, you may have as you start working on your projects. Um, and we will make the slide deck and uh, the recording readily available for you as soon as we can. Well, with that, have a great evening, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and good luck in your projects. And 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 really really excited really looking forward to everything that you're going to share with us thank you